This is Tom Brecky and today I'm talking about diabetic foot ulcers. So a foot ulcer is a break in the skin. People hear about this a lot because you could get an amputation. You could lose your foot. You could lose your balance. You could get an infection. You could end up in a hospital for two weeks. I see this all the time. This is probably my number one patient that I see are diabetics with infections and problems. So this is very dear to my heart. So I'm gonna give you the best tips on what to do, how to take care of your diabetic ulcer, and when you should go to your doctor. And we're starting right now. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. So diabetic foot ulcer is extremely common. This is a huge problem in society. It uses up billions and billions of dollars. It makes people's lives shorter. It makes you walk less. These are massive problems, but an ulcer is defined as a break in the skin. So when your skin opens up, you're basically down to the fleshy part, which is called subcutaneous fat. You could see muscle, you could see bone. That's where it starts to get really dangerous. Why do diabetic ulcers happen? As a diabetic, you usually lose sensation. This is called peripheral neuropathy. As you start to lose sensation, you can develop blisters, wounds, your skin can erode. When you're pressing in one area with your big toe or your fifth toe in tight shoes, you don't feel it and that skin rubs away. Problem number two is most people with diabetes have less and less blood flow. Sometimes they're smokers, sometimes they have heart issues, sometimes they have other issues that contribute to poor health. Sometimes their blood vessels become calcified. That's a big problem. The third thing is pressure. So usually people with diabetes tend to carry a little bit more weight. And as they're more numb, they don't have the right shoes. I usually ask my diabetic patients, are you barefoot at home? And they say, no, I'm in socks. But that doesn't count. I'm talking a good supportive running shoe with an orthotic. That's usually what most people need. That's why the government usually covers things like diabetic shoes. There's a ton of research behind wearing this stuff. It prevents wounds. And number four is the least common, but direct injury. Although this is the most popular one is when somebody stubs their toe, they bump it. People usually put the blame on that. The danger of a diabetic foot ulcer is not the ulcer itself, but an ulcer is just a matter of time until bacteria gets in there. Bacteria, fungus, debris, then you have an infection. This is called cellulitis. When your skin's red and painful, that could force you into the hospital. But this is where your podiatrist comes in. You need to call your podiatrist or your doctor at this point and get started on antibiotic if there's pus, if you're really sick, if you feel like vomiting, you have to go to the emergency room. But the problem is if this gets worse, it can get into the bone, it can get in the muscles, the infection can go up the tendons, up the legs. And what happens is this is how people can lose a toe. They could lose part of their foot. They could lose their whole leg. We see this all the time. Unfortunately, this is something I deal with a lot. And I see like five plus patients a week sometimes in the major hospitals we work at. So if you're a diabetic, you need to have a podiatrist, especially if you have foot wounds, if you have foot problems. The easiest ways to take care of this is to get evaluated. How's your blood flow? How's your sensation? How are your toenails? How are your corns? How are your calluses? How's the pressure on the bottom of the foot? What kind of shoes are you wearing? How's your flexibility? Are you seeing an endocrinologist? Are you seeing a primary care doctor to manage your diabetes and diagnose it? Are you getting blood work done regularly? Are you checking your diabetes? All this stuff needs to be looked at. Otherwise, you could develop some of these problems. So when people come see a podiatrist, usually you would start with a history. So how long have you been a diabetic? Get some blood work. So what are your blood sugars like? What's your hemoglobin A1C? A normal hemoglobin A1C should be under six, but as it goes up from a six to a seven, to an eight, to a nine, to a 10. Once you start getting up over seven, that's when we start to see problems develop, especially if you've had that for a year, two years, three years, big problems start to develop. So what we would do is get that blood work. We'd get x-rays. Are there pressure areas? Because as a diabetic, you might not feel that. We could get an MRI if there's concern for bone infection. We could get an ultrasound. In the office, we love to do ultrasound. And at the same time, 
If it's more, we go to a hospital. And I work with a vascular surgeon as well where they can check your blood flow. Are there calcifications? Are there blockages in your blood flow? Because if you don't have blood, it's hard to heal these wounds. If you don't have your diabetes under control, it's hard to heal these wounds. So the real key is getting that blood sugar under control, getting good blood flow, and my personal favorite, offloading. Offloading is the use of boots. So a big boot like this, they are available. They're covered by insurance. This boot can have inserts in there. We have boots like these. The good news is most insurance plans cover these types of boots. These boots take a lot of pressure off your ankle, off your foot. They can prevent your foot from jamming too much in the front or too much on your heel. You could see it's a smooth process across the bottom so it doesn't just jam the front of your foot. That's the beauty of these types of boots. But if you have a wound, if you're heavy, if there's a lot of pressure on your foot, I usually like to put a cast on. So initially, if there's a wound, I make like a donut around the wound with padding, put some medication on the wound, and then we put a cast around it. This is a walking cast where you can move around still, and there's almost complete, it's never complete, but it's almost like let's say 90% pressure off that wound. We can do that week after week until that wound heals, and some of these bigger patients that can't keep pressure off their foot, can let that foot heal. This is all covered stuff. Insurance wants you to get better and heal these wounds so that you're not in the hospital losing your leg or getting infected. That's the trick. And then most good Medicare plans or insurance plans can cover things like diabetic shoes. This isn't a diabetic shoes, but it's like this. Ones with rocker bottoms, ones that are not pointy, ones that have lots of room in the toes, and orthotics. So an orthotic, so without an orthotic, look at it. Your foot flattens out, these bones are pressing, but look at, with a soft orthotic like this, look at how stable the foot is. It redistributes very nicely, that's the key. So casting, wearing these great boots, diabetic shoes, diabetic inserts, slippers for home, look at, there's slippers with the inserts built into them. That's the beauty. You don't have to be barefoot or just in shoes. I know most diabetic patients don't like to wear stuff, but I'm telling you, that's what makes the big difference. One thing to consider as a diabetic is your ligaments and tendons get a lot tighter due to the blood sugar. So check out my right foot. It can bend up a little bit more than my left foot. So in this case, I had an injury and I'm not a diabetic, but see how my left foot has to turn out to make up that motion. So look at how the right foot can turn up, but the left foot can't make it up that high. And the left foot has to now turn up and then outward because it can't quite get that motion. So you could see that motion externally rotating there. That would mean there's pressure on that left ball of the foot more so than the right foot. So how do you fix that? Number one is using a can or some type of rolling device to massage the arch. You could get uh, some fancy devices. This is a frozen ice ball that you could get online. It's not the best product. It's good for your muscles, like your calf muscles, but these are rubber balls with soft little nubs on them that can massage out some of the plantar fascia, some of the tight ligaments, especially if you have foot soreness at night. Just be careful not to hurt yourself. So the next thing is, is a massage roller stick. This is an easy to use device because you can use it to massage your calf muscles, your hamstrings, and this will really loosen up a lot of that tightness that comes from not moving as much and having diabetes for a long time. Uh, so on your plantar fascia, on the bottom of your foot, on the back of your calf, on your thigh, on your hamstring. So even using a towel to grab your toes, to stretch your calf muscles, your hamstrings. So being able to use this towel now, the key is you massage yourself ahead of time. Now you stretch. So getting some massage and flexibility, that can really help long-term in getting pressure off the ball of your feet. When should you go to the ER? If you wake up and you have nausea, vomiting, fever, chills, if you feel sick, if your foot looks like a grapefruit, if it's a balloon that's swollen, if there's pus coming out, if it really hurts and you're like, hey, it's never hurt this much before, go to the ER. We can get you IV antibiotics. Me, a podiatrist can come check you out. Sometimes it needs to be cleaned out. It's almost like having a pimple that needs to be popped. Sometimes the infection's in the bone. You don't want to wait that long because once it's in the bone, unfortunately you either need IV antibiotics for a very, very long time. We're talking like six weeks or more, or potentially surgery, and not the good kind of surgery. 
What you wanna do at home is be careful. Don't scald yourself with hot water. Use soap, use lukewarm water. Check your feet every morning. Go see your podiatrist, get your nails checked, get your blood flow checked, get your nerve sensation checked. And if you have nerve sensation problems, check out this video. We talk about diabetic peripheral neuropathy and this can help uh, talk about things that get nerve sensation better for your feet in peripheral neuropathy. So that's something to look at, but always check with your podiatrist. Don't trust anything on these videos. Always check with your doctor, get evaluated because confusion is where people get in trouble. Hit the subscribe for amazing foot content, bunions, heel pain, everything for the foot and ankle. Do it safely and cost effectively. We've got you covered, so subscribe.